Matters with Paul Rosen. Our diets, our Western diets in America are just really, you just don't realize how poor they really are. What would you say to others who would like to feel better? Sometimes you need to find the instructions. That's where the testing and everything comes in because without that knowledge, there's no way I could have got to the point where I'm at today. Straight talk about health. And then I start preaching and telling them what I've been doing. (laughs) And this guy named Paul Rosen has changed my life. With your host, Paul Rosen. By the way, the information contained in this program is not approved by the FDA nor intended to treat, diagnose, or claim to cure any medical condition or disease as defined by Western medicine. However, Skilled practitioners of many disciplines have found nutrition response testing to be a highly reliable, supportive technology for assessing the health and fitness of the body's functional system. Brain food. Is there really such a thing as food we can eat to make ourselves smarter and better? Is there brain food we can consume that will get rid of brain fog? Let's let's just uh, you know step back a second and talk a little bit about the brain because um, uh, you know uh, most people may not know that your brain weighs about three pounds. I did not know that. Your skin weighs twice as much as your brain. Because By the way, have... I'm getting these facts from. I appreciate. Uh, uh, the work that uh, Dr. Mercola does, and so I'm utilizing some of the information from his uh, from his website. So, uh, your brain is made up of about 75 percent water. Your brain consists of about 100 billion neurons. There are anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 synapses for each neuron. So, lots of connections. Those. <clears throat> Go to lots of places, mm-hmm. and there are no pain receptors in your brain, so you can't feel pain in the brain. No kidding. Where brain does injury that come from? No, no pain receptors. Where yeah, does that come where, from? Where, where, where do we feel pain in our bodies? Well, the the brain itself does not take care of does that. not contain brain does not contain pain receptors. Okay. Your skin does. Okay, your skin does, and maybe your nervous system. Try and... sticking your finger in a in a in a flame and see what happens. Well, I, I'm okay with not doing okay. that. I understand why pain happens externally, but why does our body register that and send us the message that we should stop doing whatever behavior is causing the pain? Why? That that is a question that I'm going to have to consult the the God for. No, okay. but I have, seeing as how I have, you know, less than a straight line connection. I'm going to have to wait on that. The you, don't, you don't have to be divine, but if you happen to know why the body feels pain, call us, 503-225-0860. Well, the body cause. I mean, if you you want the general answer, because there are, are sensors, right, uh, nerves, if you will, in the, in the uh, various parts of the body, and that reports pain. That makes sense. But what I me. was saying was, because I think the point that I was making now is sort of muddy, kind mm-hmm. of brain fogged over, <laughs> and that is that the brain itself, right, doesn't have pain receptors. Well, I did do that thing you hate, Paul. I had a sausage McMuffin this morning, so oh my God. it could be I'm a little brain fogged. <clears throat> no right wonder now. you're asking these questions. I get it. Okay, there are 100,000 miles of blood vessels in the brain. 100,000 miles of blood vessels. That's really interesting. And your brain is the fattest organ in your body. May consist of at least 60% fat. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lot of So you might wonder, how could you have 75% water and 60% fat? One might wonder that. <laughs> yes, we we do wonder that. As only as only a hundred percent actually there's only a hundred percent of whatever. I think the point they're making there is of the twenty five percent left, sixty percent is fat. That explains a lot of things about why we operate the way we do if we have so much fat in our brains. And at birth your brain is almost the same size as an adult brain. Contain most of the brain cells for your whole life. Right Even though your head is so tiny when you're an infant, the, the the head itself grows. The brain grows some, but not as much as you might you might think. And that explains some human behavior, also. Does grow. 
There you go. I got I got a rim shot for that. How yeah, about them you apples? always get rim shots. I mean, <laughs> James, you've been paying James off for years. No, it's not See? worth it. Believe there me. it is. My, my, my ego's you not quite the, that fragile. He's telling you the old cash register clink. You say just another payment by Rod. So do you have other information <clears> about <throat> the brain that's as interesting as these previous facts? I do. Uh, newborn's brain grows about three times its size in the first year. Humans continue to make... New neurons. This is really important. Well, wait, I, I thought you said the brain doesn't grow that much. You know what? I'm just getting this stuff from his <laughs> side. I mean, I, I'm just, I haven't, I yeah. haven't vetted it all yet. Now it grows three <laughs> times. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get this straight here. It says it's almost the same size. Didn't say it. It was the same size. As okay. Almost, brain. almost being the key. And word remember there. when one says three times, right? That doesn't necessarily mean three times the, uh, you know, you say three times the size, right? Grows three times. Oh, I see. So it could grow the first time just a little bit, mm-hmm. then a little bit more, and a little bit more after Correct. that. Correct. There you go. Correct. All right. Got that clear now? Yeah, we got that clarified. Right. Your brain uses 20% of the total oxygen in your body, and your brain loses blood for 8 to 10 seconds. You will lose consciousness. That makes sense. Yeah. Lots of very interesting. Oh, this is interesting. Your brain generates between 10 and 23 watts of power or enough energy to power a light bulb. Well, there you go. That brain, <laughs> How long does that take to happen? That's why, that's why, you know, you always see light bulbs hanging the light over people. over the head, yeah. The light bulb goes on, you know. So. There you go. If you're out of candles, just no, wire I yourself just, up. Just, yeah. There you go. Which confirms the whole matrix uh, premise. You just watch The Matrix again, so now you're kind of stuck on things related to that movie. Is right? that correct? It confirms the whole Matrix. If you've ever seen the movie The Matrix, you know that people were essentially harvested as batteries to produce, uh, you know, power, electricity. There, there was for a long period of time, people thought the brain didn't, you know, didn't uh, 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 grow in terms of its capacity. In other words, regenerate, but it actually does. The new research shows that it does, so which effect, is one of the reasons why using your brain, right, basically staves off the potential uh, for things like Alzheimer's or other types of senility. And I've heard of that. I've heard of people <clears throat> saying they want to, as they get older, keep their brain stimulated for that very reason. So they might read more. They might engage with others more, mm-hmm. you know, and try to learn new things constantly. And I, I think that's pretty obvious from anecdotal evidence. If you see somebody who becomes very, very sedentary as he grows older, I think he will have more difficulty with his mind. And that is basically shown to be true. Now, that's not foolproof, just keeping your brain, you know, functional, keeping active doesn't uh, is 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 no one hundred percent defense against uh, you know such things as as Alzheimer's, but we're going to talk more about uh, you know the 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 connected causes the multi causes of these types of things, and and you know some people ask me they say, gee Paul do you think that everything all of uh, human experience um, and and uh, health in particular is related to nutrition. And I always tell them the same thing. Which is? Yes, <laughs> I do. And the reason is, is because my clinical experience with the nutrition response testing and help people restore their health is that when you change your diet with a purpose, that is recognizing the uh, uh, specific uh, uniquenesses of each individual when you when you set forth a strategy based on the uniquenesses of each person, it's funny how the same result occurs, and that is restoration of quality of life and health. I would think it speaks to our idea about making yourself more active with your mind at any point in your life, not just as you grow older. The whole process of learning, taking in new information, engaging with others, all of those things improve quality of life. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a package. Not only are you exercising your brain, in effect, you're also making yourself a better, more well-rounded person. But the interesting thing about exercises is, is that if you if you don't have the energy, if you don't have the inspiration, 
then you're not likely to do those things. No, you're not. But I can I can tell you this on a small scale level. There are many days where I don't want to go to the gym. But if you get yourself there and if you get that exercise done, you feel fantastic afterwards. And you're always glad you made the effort. Well, I would say that that's true for the most part, although you say to people who are, for example, uh, way overweight and who are experiencing chronic uh, you know, chronic fatigue or so forth. I mean, it's not a matter of just, you know, sending yourself to the gym to get exercise. I, I agree. And I, I, so I don't my mean to point, suggest. My point is, is that first and foremost, the connection is diet. And it's the same thing for brain health. But are, first are they, and foremost, diet is the issue. But are not all these things a package? Your brain health, your physical health, and your diet, and the exercise you choose to undergo. They are. They are. And, and the exercise, too. I'm a big advocate, as you may guess, but I understand if you have weight issues or if you have a thyroid issue, whatever is making it difficult for you to work out, those are things you can get past. First and foremost, though, is what you put in your mouth. Agreed. And, and of course, you have to supplement that with exercise. And I know some people get really aggravated with me when I say that. But you know what? Uh, I mean, it's the feedback. It's the clinical feedback. It's just what happens every day in my clinic. People who decide, people who are ready, people who are able, when they make the changes and they begin to feel better, it makes total sense to them. Would it be fair to say, Paul, that you're an advocate of taking control then and also, more importantly, perhaps, taking responsibility? Yes. It's the biggest thing. You know, where we're, people tend to uh, point to, to, to everybody or everything else rather than themselves when they're in a predicament, whatever that predicament happens to be. And uh, if you just, you know, take those fingers and point them back at yourself, you'd be more likely to, uh, you know, do something about it, change what there is. It doesn't, you know, obviate the, the obvious, which is life can be overwhelming at times and you can experience overwhelming things which may temporarily put you in a, you know, a static state. But if you always recognize that it's you, your responsibility to uh, take the action, then you, you always retain uh, you know, the power to change. I would maintain, too, if you're in good health, you're in a much better position to better deal with all the curveballs that life can throw at you. And that includes, you know, tragedies, deaths in the family, deaths of people close to you. Maybe you have a breakup, difficulty at work. There are all kinds of things that can beat you down. But if you're healthy, I think you're much better prepared mentally and physically to get through all that. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, this discussion is really good because... I think that people in general don't um, don't appreciate how much power they have as an individual. You know what they can do if they uh, uh, you know uh, can be motivated, can be inspired. But the first and foremost thing you have to understand is, and this is true for brain fog or 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 any other brain condition, and that is what you put in your mouth matters. Totally matters. Now. There is a a book out there that was written for laypersons, um, <clears throat> meaning not professionals. Although it's good thing for professionals to read as well. It's called the 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 Grain Brain. The Grain Brain. It's the name of the book. Okay. And and it highlights the understanding how much influence uh, diet has on brain health and overall health, of course. But we're talking brain health today specifically. And the more the, the, the foods that you eat, <clears throat> the more insulin you produce, that your body produces, the more infl- inflammatory patterns you, you promote. And inflammation in the body simply are not a good thing. So inflammation is caused by poor diet? Yes, absolutely. You and betcha. so when you say inflammation, you're talking about what particular parts of the body? I'm talking that- about every... Every chronic illness you can think of, right? I'm not just talking about infectious inflammation. I'm also talking about inflammation caused by what you put in your mouth. That's interesting because I think most of us consider inflammation to be caused by external factors, maybe, Mm -hmm. you know, just an accident even or something like that. And nothing could be further from the truth. So um, 
uh, the, the, the grain brain is really speaking about eating foods, particularly grains, but also fruits and sugars. Um, sugars? Yeah, other sugar. Okay, yeah. holy cow. Sugar, sugar. No, well, I'm just thinking, though, because you're so generally anti-sugar, except for particular cases, it's interesting to hear sugars as part of a healthy diet. No, you heard wrong. Okay, well, that's why. I said why. those things are what cause the inflammatory pattern. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. You were, you, you I'm see, glad I, I'm glad it's I that clarified. Nikki D food that you, you ate before you came. It's the lack of sharpness crispness you know i think too as i get older the mickey d's food isn't tasting all that good <laughs> i should hope not <laughs> yeah uh, i think i think our bodies change and just kind of uh you know and you tell me do our taste receptors change as we get older yes they do especially when you eat you know uh, uh just bad fast food, food. sure I, I can't tell you how many patients i've had that come in and tell me that they lose their sense of smell which in in uh, many respects also is connected to the sense of taste is that a natural process of aging or is it something that we hasten or hasten by our bad habits uh i would i would uh point to the to the latter okay. not the former and the reason i say that is because i've taken many a mature uh, uh patient you know what i'm saying mature i do but yeah. I many a mature patient where who have had these problems and turned them around by changing their diet I would think smell, too, is also direct, directly related to taste. Is that not correct? That's what I said. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're, uh, you know, if you're losing that sense, you're losing a lot because you're losing your ability to enjoy foods. And that and also, uh, uh, you know, smell is a, a, a sense that we use to help alert us to various environmental conditions as well. Well, sure, there's that. There's the, uh, the stranger danger. It's also danger. the attractiveness, you know, to our... You know, mate or potential mate. Sure. Put on those colognes, fellas. No. No, don't. Or don't. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> or don't do that. Yeah, that whole cologne thing is really a mistake. Oh, uh, I, I, we're talking... I, I can't speak from the woman's perspective, but certainly, yeah, yeah if you've ever walked into if an office. If you smell like everybody else, how do you differentiate? I had a boss once who was a really nice guy, but, man, the cologne thing was an issue. Oh, and yeah. uh, the fake and bake, he had the fake tan going on and the toupee. He was about the age I am now, and he just, you know, he just couldn't deal with it. He just couldn't handle that, so he was slathering on this stuff, and it wasn't helping him at all. Segwaying into to brain health, brain health, right? So, so the the foods, the the book, the grain brain, basically highlights the understanding that eating lots and lots of grain, eating lots of fruit, and other types of concentrated sweeteners is first and first and foremost frontline uh, cause of uh, uh, compromise for brain health. Wow, that's a real slap in the face because I think a lot of us associate those unhealthy foods with general bad health and obesity and other problems, but affecting us mentally is something I don't think we consider as much as we should. Now, I'm not saying that's, that, that there are those of us that can't eat some fruit, but most people, but the, 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 the uh, uh, plentifulness of, of fruit these days <clears throat> has people eating fruit, you know, every meal. So what's this thing about the stomach being related to the brain and the health of both? Well, we've talked many times about the microbiome. This is a term that's current, uh, uh, currently used to describe all of the, um, mi the, the microorganisms that live in your gut. Bacteria and yeasts and uh, maybe a little fungi, a few viruses, um, and, uh, and, and these things... Um, uh, it, 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 there are there are healthy ones, and then there are aggressive ones, ones that are not so healthy. Aggressive ones, ones that are not so healthy. Okay. So, but the not so healthy ones are still in the gut, and they're still necessary to be able to metabolize your food, be able to utilize whatever it is you put in your mouth. Right. So, um, uh, because of that, it turns out that what you put in your mouth can change the balance of this these micro uh, microbes in your gut. And that's no surprise whatsoever, but how does that relate directly to the health of your mind or your brain? Well, both. Because when your microbiome is imbalanced 
and there's more aggressors than there are guards, if you will, um, uh, then that begins to affect uh, your immune system. And it affects all the connections in your brain. Remember how many tens of thousands of, of neuron connections that, uh, uh, that, are, uh, that are in the brain, trillions actually, that connect to every organ, every process, every, everything in the body. So I would guess the answer is the stomach and the brain, as you just explained, are hardwired to all of us. Let me every... give you an example. Right? Put a match in, under your toenail and light it. Well, tell you, me, you tell go me, ahead. Tell me, tell me if you don't feel that <laughs> everywhere right. in your body. Sure. Right? Well, that's how the microbiome affects everything in the body, including the brain. You know, and I'm not being facetious when I say this. You hear people say, my whole body aches, you mm-hmm. know, when they feel ill. And I guess that's directly related because it really does Indeed. Ache all the way over. Indeed. Um, that's one of the reasons why, the, uh, uh, the again, the grains, the, 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 the fruit sugars, and all of the rest of the sugars taken in large quantities basically totally destroy your body's capacity to function normally. So was your patient, Jan, having these kinds of issues? She was, yeah. Uh, she basically had the brain fog um, and uh, irritability, depression, fatigue, digestive problems, joint pain, etc. So why would I bring up your patient, Jan, do you think? Uh, because uh, you, you, you've gotten her ready to start with segment one. That's correct. We would like to hear some of Jan's story firsthand, how she dealt with some of these issues, and most importantly, how she found a better way to be. Do we have time? We do have time. Oh, well, then. Let's hear it. Well, a couple things is are my mother died of cancer, and I always told myself that I didn't like the method of Western medicine because I feel like that was a lot of why she passed away to begin with because they didn't treat her properly. Uh So I always had in the back of my mind that if anything ever happened to me, I would look into alternative health practices. Okay. So I've always had that in the back of my mind. And of course, I'm sitting here just waiting for something to happen so I can try these things. And... Of course, I started hearing you on the radio, and Uh I was just like, you know, this just makes so much sense. And um, so I had, um, I've been overweight for many years. Uh, I've suffered from depression and things like that. And it was just like, you know, let's try something different. Let's try the preventative methods versus the treatment methods. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. So that's. And the one that finally got me in there was the lady that said, just do it. (laughs) Yeah, she was great, wasn't she? I mean, and, and, you know, of course, I mean, people are funny. We're funny, right? Because, you know, we we sit around and we we would like to do something. We're thinking about doing something. And then, you know, know, we hear something that maybe sort of makes a little sense. And it kind of takes some time to filter through. And and finally, we just, you know, we just decide. We just we just go for it, which is what you did. Correct. Just do it. So what so you said you had some weight issues and what what were there? What were you looking um, for help with? Well, I work in a deli at a grocery store, so Uh I was constantly eating bad food and it was just like I needed something drastic. To say, okay, you can't have that anymore. <laughs> you know, I I would be good for a few days and maybe you know eat some salads or whatever. But I needed something to just say, this food is not good for you. You know, you needed something you, else. You, you you needed accountability. Yes, that's very much so. Don't don't you think? Don't don't you think that is one of the one of the miraculous components of the effectiveness of what you're doing? Accountability. Yes. yes. And I was in total denial. It was just like, you know, I don't have high blood pressure. You know, I don't have a lot of this stuff. I'm depressed because my mom died, even though it's been 25 years. But, you know, it's just like I have a reason to be depressed. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I was depressed because I was overweight or overweight because I was depressed. I, you know. (laughs) (laughs) It kind of becomes a chicken and the egg issue, doesn't it? 
Yes, yes. And so, so you, so the weight and and your your emotional balance. Were there any other symptoms that that you were dealing with that you were looking for some help with? Yeah, um, some digestive issues. You know, things just sometimes would go through me pretty quickly, and you know, it wasn't always conducive to you know have a bathroom at my ready all the time. So, um, the kind of the brain fog or lack of concentration, things like that. Um, kind of these general, I mean, not not necessarily things that put you in a wheelchair or put you in a bed, but things that you have to deal with every single day that would certainly sort of add up to making it even more difficult to just, just do a day. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Did you... And, and I... I didn't like diets. It just seemed like a diet meant that you had to think about food for practically 24 hours out of the day. Yeah, talk about that, because we were talking about that at our last visit, and you had a really interesting point of view on that. Yeah, it was, it, you had to be looking at pieces of paper, and and you're just going, well, you know, I could have this for this time, and, and as time went on, and I started eliminating all that stuff from the refrigerator. You mean the stuff that you found that you were sensitive to? <laughs> Correct. And my refrigerator broke, and so I threw a lot of those condiments away that are on the shelves and stuff like that. Right, a lucky break, as they say. All the things that have sugar in them that are hidden sugars. Oh, not that. And... um so I got rid rid of a lot of that stuff. Right now, when I need a snack, I can open the refrigerator and I can grab something, knowing that it's okay for me. So one of the issues Jan addressed directly there, we talked about earlier in the show, Paul, which is that her poor physical health was having an impact on her mental health. Exactly, and this is what I find, you know, consistently day in and day out, week in and week out. Uh, you know, when I'm working with people one on one is the chicken and the egg uh, conundrum, which basically confronts us. You know, what do we do first? Do we exercise or do we change our diet or our health? We need to exercise to improve our health, but our health is so bad we can't exercise. I mean, this is a conundrum that <clears throat> many people find themselves in. And my experience is there is one place and one place only that you can that you can uh, uh, start turning this thing around, and that is what you put in your mouth. One more note: you can get a free chapter of Paul Rosen's book, The Missing Piece. Just go to his website, acunatural.com, acunatural.com, and fill out the dialogue box that pops up. Rest assured, no information you provide will ever be shared with anyone else. So, what are you waiting for? Get going on your personal road to wellness today.